Today we are going to see this $27 billion ship. Have you ever heard of this ship? If not, stay tuned to find out more about the ship. Subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Also, click the bell icon. This membrane tank is a GT Mark III and is used to hold LNG during shipping. One of the world's largest and most challenging natural resource projects is this one. The Yamal LNG, which was built at a staggering price of $27 billion, is situated in the Yamalo Nenet area of northwest Siberia, which holds 80% of Russia's gas reserves. The Yamal LNG is a great feat of engineering, but what you may expect was not the key game changer that made this heavy price tag economically achievable. Oh, and are you aware of how frequently projects of this size go over their allotted budget and deadline? I guess it's a double whammy with this one. Natural gas is increasingly seen as a stopgap measure as the world moves away from oil in the daily commute. Despite being a fossil fuel that emits greenhouse gases when burned, natural gas is a cleaner option than coal and oil because it emits 45% less carbon dioxide. Currently, around 25% of the world's energy needs are met by natural gas, and that is also expected to increase in the future. The Yamal LNG plant is situated in Sibieta, Russia, on the Yamal Peninsula's northeastern coast. Yamal clearly translates to end of the land in the indigenous tongue. There were no roads or water connections to Sarai when the project began in 2012, so it all had to be created from scratch. This included the plant itself, the marine terminal, the international airport, and the necessary housing and amenities. The Belgian company, DEME, oversaw the extensive dredging activities to build a deep draft canal into the new port of Syriata. 50 feet below the surface, the shipping canal is 970 feet wide. But before work could start, there was a significant problem, the polar night which lasts for about four months out of the year. However, that didn't help because permafrost is northwest Siberia, where temperatures might fall less than minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit, forever freezes the surface as deep as 1300 feet, preventing construction in the Arctic Although in the summertime, the top layer known as the active layer, which is around 6.5 feet deep, could defrost and turn into mud. You need huge wheels in Sabeta to drive. The mud is unstable, which is another problem. As a result, conventional foundations would not hold. The solution was to stack everything. For the LNG plant alone, 65,000 foundation piles between 32 and 65 feet deep were driven into the frozen surface. The plant is effectively erased off the ground as a result. In addition to the temperature, the heat was a problem. The heat produced by the plant while it's running could cause the permafrost underneath to melt. To refreeze the core foundation to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, 20,000 thermosiphon devices have to be activated. The size of the LNG facility itself is 444 acres or about 250 soccer fields. The factory receives the necessary gas from 200 wells in the adjacent enormous Note and Biesco gas fields. Four trains make up the plant, which are essentially liquefaction and purifying units. This is due to the fact that gas must be liquefied by refrigeration to a temperature below 258 degrees Fahrenheit in order to transport it economically. At atmospheric pressure, that is where methane reaches its boiling point. The 600% volume reduction of the gas due to refrigeration compression, propane condenser and methane in ethane regions make up a typical train. Gas needs to be filtered before it can be liquefied because contaminants can clog the plant's cryogenic components. The plant couldn't truly be built on the spot due to the harsh environment and frigid nights, so a modular method was used. Huge components were made in China and delivered to the place where everything was pieced together like Legos. Several LNG storage facilities were also constructed. The reservoirs are adequate for both, yes, and perhaps some fishing as well. The creation of the new Yamamax class of ships, icebreaker long carriers constructed by the Finnish Arctic Engineering Company, was the biggest technological improvement brought about by the Yamal LNG. The 981-foot longships could shatter ice up to 2.1 meters thick autonomously, allowing them to travel in the Arctic all year round. The Arc 7 rating, the greatest ice class for commercial ships in heavy ice conditions, is given to these tankers. The Russian nuclear icebreakers can be followed in the channel by tankers of the Yamaks class. After the CO Francis Total, the first icebreaker in the world, the lengthy carrier Christophe de Morgiri was finished in 2017. The tankers' dual performing technologies and triple azimuth propellers are two distinctive design features. The tanker may drive sternwards or backwards when the ice is thick, since the carrier's turn is designed to break thick ice with no need for a dedicated icebreaker. 
The carrier's bow is modified for navigating in open seas and thin ice, which increases fuel efficiency. It's important to note that in order to maximize efficiency, this kind of ship and the Sebieta Harbor Terminal were developed concurrently. The tankers of the Yamal Max class are composed of three 15-megawatt Azipod propulsion engines. The vertical axis may rotate 360 degrees thanks to the Azipod thrusters. The advantages of using such propellers include improved ship mobility and the possibility for carriers to move backwards with equal efficiency. As you might guess, having a double-acting design would be highly advantageous. The cargo containment system is a crucial component of the ship's architecture. Although containment systems vary greatly from one another, they always have the same function. Currently, membrane MOS, SBP tank types for transportation, and MOS containment systems are the three options available on the market. In well-isolated tanks, LNG is maintained at negative 160 degrees Celsius and atmospheric pressure. The French GTT Mark III membrane containment system created by gas transport is installed aboard the Yamax LNG carriers. The stainless steel membrane and polyurethane foam insulation used in this cryogenic membrane technology reduce boil-off. The liquid gas within the tank evaporates and turns into a material called the boil of gas, which causes the boil-off to happen. The tank must be evacuated in order to maintain a consistent pressure, and you would not want to squander the gas because of this. Yamal Max is one LNG tanker that uses boiling water as an energy source for propulsion. The tank can be heated up to forcefully generate additional boil-off gas if necessary. Of course, the ship may operate on conventional diesel fuel whenever the tanks are empty. Devo Shipbuilding constructed 15 icebreaker LNG carriers in total in Seoul, South Korea. Each ship is capable of carrying 172,600 LNG cubic meters. The 15 ships that were built as part of the Yamal LNG project cost $4.8 billion to construct, or $320 million each. Since the Arctic Ocean sea route is only ice-free for two months out of the year, you've probably already guessed why icebreaker long tankers are necessary. The ships can depart from Sepieta in one of two directions. Tankers use the Northeast Channel all year long to get petroleum to Europe. Tankers will go eastward along the northern sea route, all the way up towards the Bering Strait when carrying fuel to Asia. In comparison to the more conventional routes through the Northeast Passage in the Suez Canal, the northern sea route has the advantage that ships can reach Asia twice as quickly in just 15 days. The drawback is that the ice can get too thick for liquefied natural gas tankers using the northern sea route during the winter. However, this may still be possible with the aid of a nuclear ice breaker as well as a convoy of tanker trucks following behind. Alternatively, during the winter, the cargo bound for Asia will have to take a very long 30-day route. With a little assistance from Mother Nature, the Russian LNG carrier Kristof de Marguerite made the first ever round voyage from the Kara Sea to China at a speed of 9.5 knots. This demonstrated that navigation here round is feasible without an icebreaker. In this instance, we should be aware that the speed is influenced by the ice's thickness. The ship can reverse at a rate of 5.5 knots if the ice is 1.5 meters thick. The top speed in open waters is 19.5 knots. Another issue to think about is the fact that gas fields consistently generate gas, but wintertime transportation is substantially slower. Because of this, you require more ships during the winter. However, during the summer, you can employ slow steaming to conserve fuel, allowing the extra ships to go more slowly and for less money. In order to enable Arctic carriers to concentrate on what they do best, breaking ice and reducing costs, Russia is building two transshipment hubs, one for each end of something like the sea route, wherein Arctic ships will shift cargo to conventional LNG carriers. What about the future, though? By 2030, Russia intends to increase LNG output there by four times. What do you think about the ship? Let us know your thoughts on this topic in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like this video.